Kingdom Rush, baby. As you can see, I have some serious experience in Kingdom Rush. I've always loved this game since I was a young tot playing the Rush on the school computer during recess. Recently, I started getting back into the game, if you know what I'm saying. And that got me thinking, well, what's the best tower in the original Kingdom Rush? All the four base towers, that being the Archer, the Mage, the Army Barracks, and the Artillery, has two fully upgraded versions. Today, we will be exploring which of these eight upgraded versions is the best. Okay, here we go. Number eight, the Musketeer. Okay, this thing just shoots too dang slow. Enemies can easily overwhelm the tower. And I mean, you look at the damage and it's surprisingly weak. Sure, some of the abilities are nice sometimes, like the headshot ability, but it's not really the game changer it seems to be. You look at the percentages and you go, oh my God, this is so good, but it's not really that great. Sure, the tower is nice to place and sort of out of the way areas like deep in corners or things like that just because of its range which is so extreme which is basically the only thing this tower has going for it it's just way too expensive i mean one upgrade side is all 250s and the other is all 300s that adds up to a total of 1650 plus the money you already spent to get the musketeers in the first place the dps is just not worth the money number seven big bertha like the Musketeer, Big Bertha just doesn't shoot fast enough. Its main purpose is crowd control because of the large splash damage, but it can't even do that well because it's just so slow. And it can't hit air enemies, so that's out of the question. I'll admit, it does do some pretty substantial damage to the right targets, but it's just not that reliable. You have to have really specific targets. Yeah, the missile launcher is pretty nice because it can hit anything on screen, including air targets. But, I don't know, it doesn't even do that much damage. It's just more for flair, I think. And the other one, the cluster bomb or whatever it's called, it's fine, but <laughs> feels like it shoots twice in the entire game, so whatever. Big Bertha is all right, but it's not that great at doing what it's intended for. Number six, Barbarian Hall. It was really hard for me to put this tower here because I just like it so much, but it just isn't quite as good as the other ones. Sure, it does a lot of damage when you upgrade to the double axis side, but the units just die too fast. I mean, holy crap, lots of damage. Holy crap, that's good. But the main purpose of having these ground units is to stall the enemies. And if the units keep dying, well then what's what's the point, you know? Come on, that, that doesn't work out. What I really like about the Barbarian Hall is that it can hit air enemies with the axe throw ability, which is, which is really great if you get some flying thing that gets to the end and it gets past all your stuff and you go, oh god, it's just gonna get through, but then some hero barbarian throws an axe and kills it. Not a bad tower in the slightest. None of them are. Except maybe the Musketeers, but it just can't stack up to the other ones. Number five, Holy Order. Okay, these guys excel at doing what the Armory Barracks is supposed to do, stall enemies. It's so hard to kill them with their healing ability paired with their heavy armor, oh my god. Sure, their damage isn't nearly as good as the Barbarians, but that's okay because they're just so much better at stalling. And the ground units aren't the ones doing the majority of the damage anyway, so you might as well have the troops that keep the enemies in the same spot the longest, while your actual towers are doing the heavy lifting. Of course, each barracks, like all the other towers, has its intended levels and situations where it works best. It just seems to me that the Holy Order Knights are more versatile than the Barbarian Hall. Number four, the Sorcerer. This guy has some pretty decent speed and damage. Uh, the Golem ability is pretty good too. I really like the Golem's ground pound attack. It's, it's pretty good at crowd control. But I really have mixed feelings about the Polymorph ability. Yeah, it's nice if you get a good polymorph off on a big enemy because it becomes so much easier to kill. But sometimes this big enemy will walk right through the rest of your defenses because the sheep are not attacked by ground troops. What's worse is that the sheep retain the number of health that they take away when they get to the end. So if you just polymorphed a three or even five hit point enemy, you better kill that sucker fast or you'll be forced to use your reign of fire ability because nothing else 
is gonna stop it. That being said, the Sorcerer is a pretty powerful tower and worthy of its number four spot. Number three, Arcane Wizard. Oh baby, this guy does a lot of damage. <laughs> sure, it's slower than the Sorcerer Mage, but the DPS is worth it and its abilities fit its kit so well. The teleportation spell is really useful for towers to get more shots on beefy enemies, especially if it's placed at the end of a stage and sends the enemies back through the majority of your defenses. And the death ray ability is so good. It's so much better than the headshot ability, which has a similar effect to basically immediately kill stuff. But the difference is the death ray will automatically kill something every certain number of seconds, while well, the headshot is RNG. All around, great tower with very suitable upgrades. You can't go wrong with this guy. Number two, Rangers. Whoa, these guys shoot super fast. The poison attack paired with its speed makes it a really great crowd control tower. And the tower does quite a bit of damage, not even including the poison attack, as long as enemies don't have any armor in which this guy's doing a significant amount less. The poison ability is one of my favorites in the whole game. It's really nice to basically add a chunk of damage to every enemy that gets hit by an arrow. Yeah, the poison effect doesn't affect every enemy going through, like you'll have, what, like zombies and spiders that don't get affected by a poison, but it affects the majority of them. The thorn grab ability is pretty good as well. Sure, it doesn't deal that much damage in itself, but it can hold enemies in place for a while, which often kills them anyway. Anyway, super versatile and always a great pick. And finally, you knew it was gonna be here. <laughs> Number one, the Tesla. Oh my god, this tower is so good. Like, <laughs> holy crap. Not even talking about the Tesla's other abilities, the basic attack is killer. It does more damage than Big Bertha, and it can arc from enemy to enemy. The crowd control ability of this thing is ridiculous. The static charge upgrade is literally so good. It will for sure do damage to everything in the Tesla's range. If you have a graveyard or just a lot of weaker enemies, the Tesla is basically a no-brainer. Oh, and did I mention it can hit air enemies? Oh, and did I mention that it's cheaper than Big Bertha? Oh, and its further upgrades are ridiculously cheap for what they are? Guys, the Tesla is insanely versatile for so many types of situations. You basically have to have this tower in every stage you play. So that's my list. Let me know if you agree with my order in the comments. Thanks for watching. Happy uh, playing. <laughs> um, okay, goodbye.